spiritual dreams will reveal your position in the kingdom of God. I believe God is moving. His spirit is moving all over the nations. And I believe that this is a very crucial time yes. uh, to be in the kingdom. Yes. And that God is demonstrating his power through his people. We have spiritual weapons to combat, to fight in spiritual warfare. Good day. Welcome to Kingdom Vision TV broadcast. I'm Dr. Sharice Lewis, Apostle of Worldwide Prophetic Kingdom Ministries and Worldwide Kingdom of Churches. Amen. I am excited to be here today and I'm glad that you have tuned in. Today we're going to be dealing with prophecy in motion. That's right. Those of you who prophesy, those of you who desire to prophesy, those who operate in prophetic ministries or who desire to operate in prophetic ministries, this broadcast is for you. And we're going to share some things, some basic foundational things about prophetic ministry. And we pray that you will be ignited to move forward in excellence and accuracy and precision in, with your prophetic gifting. So I want to begin with uh, reading the scripture found in 1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter and verse number one. It said, follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. Also in verse three says, but he that prophesied, speak it unto men to edification, exhortation, and comfort. So we understand that God wants us to desire to prophesy. He wants us to desire to prophesy. When we think of the word desire, the word desire means uh, to be intense, to want it earnestly. He wants us to be able to have a relationship with him where we're able to hear from here, him and relay the revelation or the message that we hear to others. And so that's important in moving in our spiritual gifts that we're able to hear God. When you think about the spiritual gifts in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the Bible say, I will not have you ignorant brethren concerning spiritual gifts. So we understand that the root word of ignorant is ignore. So he's telling us, I don't want you to ignore spiritual gifts. And then he goes on and named those gifts. And you can read it in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. But those gifts are categorized into nine. There are nine gifts and they're categorized into three categories. And that those gifts are categorized as this. Uh, the gift of uh, vocal gifts, the gifts of utterance. And that would entail the gift of prophecy, interpretation of tongues, and diverse kinds of tongues. I'll say it again, the gifts of utterance or the vocal gifts. And these are categorized as the gift of prophecy, interpretation of tongues, and diverse kinds of tongues. Then there's another category, the word of knowledge or the revelation gifts, or we would say the gifts of knowing. And this is the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, and the gift of discerning of spirits. And the last one is considered the power gifts. And these are the gifts of demonstration. And so these gifts are the gift of faith, the working of miracles and the gifts of healing. And you notice that the gifts of healing, there's more than one type of healing gift. You can operate in healing with limbs, legs, incurable diseases, eye, throat, and ear, like the specialist of a doctor, or you can be operating the gift of healing concerning relationships, concerning marriages. And so if you operate, if you have the gift of healing, you need to know the specific vein that God has called you to function in. And so, but today I wanna to talk about prophecy. I wanna talk about the, the, the gift, the vocal gift of prophecy. 
And we're going to be teaching a little bit out of our manual called Liquid Fire School of Prophetic, and it's the intermediate manual. And so you can, you can purchase this on Amazon. All right. And so I want to talk about this, the purpose of prophecy, because when we look at the scripture, the scripture tells us that we are to prophesy, to edify, to exhort, and to comfort. To edify, to exhort, and to comfort. So that's what the purpose of prophecy is to build up, to stir up, and to cheer up. And so when we edify someone, we're building them up to strengthen them morally. We want to strengthen in our prophetic utterance. We should be able to strengthen people morally. Amen. We want to be able to strengthen their character, their conduct, their behavior. We want to strengthen their conscience. The, the conscious, the function, the conscious is, is, is in the function of the spiritual man. So in other words, we want to build up the spiritual man in an individual. The spiritual man is that unseen you. That hidden part of you, the part that no one can see. So we as prophetic vessels, prophets, or whether you operate in the gift of prophecy, because you can be a gift mix. You can be an evangelist with a prophetic anointing and a healing anointing. You can be a teacher with a prophetic anointing and an administrative anointing. You can be an apostle with a teacher anointing and an apostolic anointing and the prophetic anointing. So, so whatever your classification is, we want to convey to you today is that the purpose of prophecy is to build up, to stir up, and to cheer up. So let's go back over edification. It means to build up, to strengthen morally. We want to strengthen the character of an individual, not tear them down. So in order to operate in the function of prophetic ministry in this hour, the prophetic vessel, whether you are a prophet or whatever your classification is, you've got to respond to the revelation that God, the Holy Spirit is communicating to you concerning a specific individual, a place, a person, or a situation. Whatever you're gonna minister to, prophetically or whomever you're going to minister to prophetically you've got to receive revelation from God when you think about in the old testament no messenger can send a message or carry a message when they have not received authorization from the king so in order for a messenger a soldier to relay a message to someone else in another city or country or town. They had to receive the message from the king and it had to have his seal on it. So now I said that to correlate now as a prophetic vessel, if you are speaking things that God never intended for you to say, you are out of order. You have to be sanctioned by God. And you must be tried and proven in your gifting in order for you to come forth and be called, deemed as a true prophet of God. And so that's a process. Doesn't happen overnight. And so when we talk about a process, not many people are willing to go through the process where God could develop their gifts and we find prophetic vessels ministering to many people and wounding people because they don't understand how to function with their gift. Don't you know as a prophetic vessel, everything that God share with you, the Holy Spirit show you is not to be conveyed to the person? Did you know that? There are times when God will give you some things that he wants you to pray about to intercede about because he's still working on a situation or working on someone else's faith. So the timing of releasing a prophetic utterance is very crucial 
in order for the vessel who you're ministering to to receive what God is saying through you. That's important. And so that requires the prophetic vessel to be in the face of God, to have a relationship and be a vessel of prayer. That's important. So edification means to build up, build up. It means to strengthen morally. That's what we want to do. I want you to practice that when you're prophesying. Make sure you building the person up and not tearing them down. They already know what their problem is. They already know what the situation is. But now you have to speak to that problem. You have to speak to it in the words that God has given you to speak according to the revelation that he has shown you or he has spoken to you about while the person is there or while he's dealing with you about the person. But you have to build them up. That's an intricate part of the prophetic utterance that you would give a person. The next thing is that we should exhort. To exhort means to stir up, to stir up. To exhort means to call someone near. We want them to be called near to God. They have to be called near to God. It's an earnest appeal to advise them strongly in the things of God. That's important because a lot of people prophesy and they're hurting people because they're using the wrong words. They're not stirring them up. They're not building them up. But don't you know that when there's a word of denunciation or a word of correction, that should be given by a seasoned prophet or an apostle, one who has labored, one who is not a novice, but one who is mature. Because when you're speaking to a person concerning their life, you can either enhance them or you can tear them away from God, push them away from God. And so it's important for you, prophetic vessels, to understand the purpose of prophecy. Remember, the first thing we said was build up to edify. The second thing we said was to what? Stir up, to exhort. Because we want them to be called near to God. Amen? And the last part is to comfort. To comfort. To comfort means to console. To console. It means to speak intimately to, to speak intimately to a person, to what? To have compassion, to give cheer, to cheer up. So we talked about to build up, to stir up, to cheer up. It's something wrong if you're always prophesying gloom and doom. It's something wrong. And some people prophesy and they have, been, have not been authorized to prophesy. And it hurts people. So it's very important, prophetic vessels, that you understand the function of your gift before you begin to prophesy. You understand what I'm saying now? I'm gonna say it again. In order to move in the purpose of prophecy, there are three elements that are crucial to the prophecy in order for a person to receive it. We have to edify, we have to exhort, and we have to comfort. Easy way to remember is to build up, to stir up, and to cheer up. You don't want to wound anybody when you're ministering the word of the Lord. Whatever God is saying, you want them to walk away with hope. Even if God has shown you sin in a person's life, unless he tells you to speak it, you are to minister to that area. Oftentimes in our activations, in my training, I use examples. If God showed you a person with something on their mouth, you're not going to say, yea, the Lord thy God said you have crud on your mouth. You're not going to say that. 
But God is showing you that for a reason. He's revealing to you that he's going to change the conversation. He's going to change the heart. He's going to change the speech of an individual. So you have to articulate the revelation that God is showing you about the person. Not expose their weakness, but to minister healing. And you can minister correction without being dogmatic and making them feel like they're worthless. Remember, as a prophetic vessel, whenever you're given a prophecy, you are to build up, to stir up, and cheer up unless you have been authorized to denounce or correct an individual. Amen. We're going to take a break. We'll be back in a moment. Remember to call your neighbor and call a friend and let them know we're talking about prophecy in motion. Meet Roku Express, now five times more powerful than its predecessor. It's high definition streaming made easy. Less than 30 bucks, and that includes an HDMI cable. There's a Roku player just for you. And every one comes with a simple and intuitive home screen, more than 500,000 movies and TV episodes, including free movies and TV shows on the Roku channel. The fastest way to find your favorites by title, actor, or director with Roku Search. And the free Roku mobile app to make your iOS or Android device the ultimate streaming companion. The all new Roku lineup, Roku. Now this is TV. Amen. You've tuned, to, tuned in to Kingdom Vision broadcast. I'm Dr. Sharice Lewis discussing prophecy in motion. And before our break, we talked about the purpose of prophecy found in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse number 3. And I'll repeat that scripture. For those of you who just tuned in, amen. But he that prophesies, speaking unto men, to edification and exhortation and comfort. So we learned before the break that we have a responsibility when we're prophesying to edify, to exhort, and to comfort. When we look at the scripture, God purpose for prophecy to build up the body of Christ, corporately and individually. If you didn't know it, you know it now. That the purpose of prophecy is to build up the body of Christ, corporately and individually. So when you lay that in your spiritual DNA, now you can remember that when something is purpose, when God has purpose, for a particular thing, we, in order for us to be accurate and to be in alignment with God's word, we have to do as God has instructed in his word. So now I'm giving you knowledge where you can judge a prophecy because if it doesn't line up with scripture, you don't have to accept it. Amen. This scripture also compels us and urges us to abide in the presence of God because in order to build someone up, in order to stir someone up, I have to walk in God's divine will in order to be able to help somebody else to draw them near to God. How can a prophetic vessel operate in exhortation 
if they're not walking in the will of God, they won't even know how to draw another individual to God because it's by spirit, not by your flesh, not by mere words. Because when the prophet has been sanctioned and authorized, don't you know there's a latent power in that prophetic utterance that will bring to pass the proceeding word that is spoken. So that word becomes a Dabar word and it pushes through all obstacles. That's why it's important for the prophetic vessel, whether you are a prophet or whatever your classification, is that you have a relationship with God so heaven can back you up when you speak. Because you want to be authorized by God and he will honor the words that you say. But the only way that can happen is that you got to be in his divine will. Amen? So it's important for us to have our relationship, prophetic vessels, in alignment with God. Anybody can prophesy, but you want to have the sanction of God. You want to have the weight of the glory that will back you up and actuate the words that you have spoken. Bring them to pass in the earth realm. That's important. You understand what I'm saying? So, in this day and hour, there are so many people who are hurting. There are so many people who are in need. You don't have to wait if you're a prophetic vessel. You could operate in prophetic evangelism on the street. There are people around you. Just take a look with your spiritual eye who has a need to hear direction, to receive healing from God. We have to operate in the purpose of prophecy that God will be glorified in the things that we speak. See what I'm saying? God wants us to walk in truth. He want us to walk in humility. He want us to walk in a way that we're able to hear him because he's always speaking. Some people don't believe, some people don't teach that you can hear from God, that God is speaking all the time. He's speaking all the time, but we're not listening all the time. God will speak to those who are open to listen to hear. The Bible said if we seek him, we will find him. If we ask, it shall be given. If we seek, we shall find. If we knock, the door will be open unto us. I believe today that God is summoning his prophetic vessels into a new place of prayer. So he can position us to speak his word in this dark and dying world. If you want to increase in your prophetic gifting, if you want to go to another place in God where you're able to hear from God on a regular basis, I want to encourage you to build your relationship with God. I want to encourage you today to spend time with God in prayer. I want to encourage you to draw closer to him. I want to encourage you to build yourself up, your inner man, your spiritual man, with the things of God. Read your word. Seek his face. Pray. Fast. Spend time soaking, worshiping in the presence of God. I promise you, you will be able to hear him in clarity. Not only for others, but for yourself as well. So today, I pray that you have learned something about the purpose of prophecy. And I want to challenge you to go out and begin to prophesy. But when you prophesy, 
build up, stir up, and cheer up. I'm getting ready to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for our TV viewers on today. We thank you, Lord God, for the gift of prophecy. We thank you, Lord God, for the purpose of prophecy, that you bring in divine alignment in this gift, that people will begin to speak only what you have authorized us to speak. We just thank you right now for blessing every vessel that operates in this ministry gift. Allow us to move forward with confidence, truth, love, and accuracy. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for watching today. God bless you. I pray God speed with you on today. And don't forget to covet, to prophesy. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless. It's easy to be a part of One TV. All you have to do is press play. With all new programs like The Exodus Experience with Apostle Nataki Tompkins. Hearers of His Voice School of the Prophets with Prophet Debbie Mack. Kingdom Vision with Apostle Sharice Lewis. The Marketplace Connection with your host, Linda Hunt. She Speaks with Dr. Laura Brown. And Secrets Exposed with Lisa R. Gray. Hey, you ready? I know I am. Me too. Good. All you gotta do is press play.